Hey, hey everybody out there in YouTube land, it's Amber here at the B channel, back with another video to encourage you guys, um, um, today's topic is seeking life balance, finding a place of peace and joy. Now, this is something that I'm really excited about because it's something that I'm currently working on. And let me tell you, it's a daily struggle. It is something that you're constantly going to be in pursuit of. And you have to work at it. It's not going to come easy. But if you do the work and you make it a priority, instead of living a lopsided life, you can live the life that you deserve and live your best life. So, um, here we go. The first tip that I would share in seeking life balance is do take time off from work. It is essential for your health and sanity. It helps you recharge and you come back refreshed. So, it's good for you because you need that time away. And you need to recharge. We, humans, we're, we're like batteries. We need to be charged every so often. And it just helps to get away sometimes and have the um, ability to hear yourself think. And just to relax and not have to do something every single solitary day. It's really helpful. So if you had the opportunity to have, you have, if you have paid vacation, just to really take advantage of that because it will save your life. I am telling you. Um, secondly, don't feel guilty for spending time alone. Sometimes you need time to self-reflect and just have me time. And the people that you love will truly thank you for that. And just take time to do something that you love. For me, I don't do some, some of these things often, but when I do, it's really um, refreshing and it really brings me some level of joy. Um, like I do my nails, I do my, my feet, and I do my hands, mani-pedi, you know. Um, I will color. They have adult coloring books with scriptures in it. That's very therapeutic. I like to um, scrapbook. I make scrapbook and uh, do at least like a page or two or three pages. And next thing you know, three hours and pass by. I was working on it yesterday. And it's just really peaceful. And it gives you a place to place your energy. Instead of um, just being so wrapped up in your own mind, it kind of gives you a way to escape as well. So look for activities like that, even even meditation or exercise. That's my me time too. And um, just reading a book or reading a magazine sometimes is good me time. So those are some things that I enjoy doing. So as well as binge watching TV occasionally, but I don't like to watch it as much as I used to. Um, I'm changing in that way. I think I'm maturing a little bit trying to spread myself out a little bit more venture out of my comfort zone in terms of the things that I enjoy and um, also the next tip moving on to the next tip it is you want to spend time with your family that's essential for life balance because in life you only have pretty much three things you have family you have your friends you have your work and everything else pretty much centers around those three things. So you need to spend time with your family because it shows that you love them. And, you know, talk to them, watch a movie with them and just show an interest in things that matter to them and check in on them. And, you know, see how their life is going, because sometimes we get so wrapped up in our lives. We don't take time to check on others that matter to us most and it's not intentional, so don't feel bad about it, but, you know, well, hopefully it's not intentional, but if it does happen, just, you know, take that time to 
reconnect and just spend time with them. It really does make a lot of difference, like a whole world of difference. Um, the next thing I would say is spend time with your friends. Get out and experience things and enjoy life. You do not want to just sit in the house all the time and do the same thing day in and day out because it gets lonely. It's kind of sad, actually, kind of depressing. You need some variety. You need to see other people. You need to socialize. So do this for your health. And just make the most out of every day. Don't waste time. Don't spend too much time alone. That's the thing we're, th we're talking about here is life balance. So you don't want to spend too much time alone. And you don't want to spend too much time on any one thing. You need to like divide your life up into little sections. And little divide your day up into little sections. And um, you know, based on what matters to you the most. And make sure you're giving adequate time to the things that matter and inadequate time to the things that you you need to do that are the necessary evils so and that brings me to the next topic which would be um take care of yourself you know inside and out do give yourself a manicure a pedicure wash your hair exercise spend time with god journal Get your thoughts on paper. It is very healthy, believe me. I really believe strongly in gratitude journals and which is to me the the um the new terminology, the new framing that I would give a gratitude journal is a love letter to God. So I've started to write it actually write my gratitude to God and say thank you God for this or thank you God for that or I have joy about or I am thankful for and I think that really has changed my perspective because before I was just writing what I was thankful for. But now it's like, hmm, I'm placing it somewhere. I'm giving thanks to my to the higher being, to the creator of the universe. And it makes it more real when you write it out. And um, also love letters to yourself. Very healthy thing to do. And encourage yourself, lift yourself up because sometimes you don't have anybody else. So... Take the time to take care of yourself, your spirit. Take care of your mind. Take care of your body, inside and out. It's very important that you set aside that time to do that. And that brings me to the last topic, which is your priorities. You have to balance your life out. There are things that you have to do for yourself. There are things, there's, there's time that you need to spend with your family. There's time that you need to spend with friends. There's time that you have to do um spend me time so you, you know you need adequate me time adequate people time adequate you know get down to business time so for me um priorities would be finances slash your job then there are goals that you want to achieve to propel yourself forward in life you don't want to stay in the same place you were and um, you don't want to be in the same place that you were last year at the end of this year and um, so you have to set goals for yourself and you have to do things that propel your life forward and not keep you stuck in the mud or or uh, make you regress. So you have to make sure that you're taking care of your finances. You're looking at what you're spending. You are, you know, going to work. Do you have a job? Are you gainfully employed? Um, are you interacting with people? Are you... Are learning life skills or are you growing certain things that you have to do for yourself it's not it's not a want to do or a might do or should do it's a must do so to me balance is essential to sanity because there is no you know without balance you'll go insane so um to me there's no specific formula for any one person but I personally feel like my life was always lopsided. And it's finally balancing out. And it is because I take the time to break my day up and dedicate time to things that I love. And things that I need to do. I am not where I want to be. But one day I will get there. God willing. And I would like to share two scriptures that I feel like illustrate this point. 
adequately. Um, the first of which is Romans 8.28 from the Amplified Bible. We are assured and know that God, being a partner in their labor, all things work together and are fitting into a plan for good to and for those who love God and are called according to his design and purpose. So, if you love God and you know that he, you have, he has placed a calling on your life, things are working together for your good. Everything, not some things, not most things, not a few things. All things are working together for your good. So at the end of the day, what you might see as a failure, a misstep, a mistake, a setback, a struggle, a detour to success, is ultimately just a pit stop on the road to success. So realize that everything that's happening to you is happening for you, for your good. And it's going to work out for your good. It's all leading up to, it's culminating to your to your destiny. So, just realize that. And another verse that I really love is 1 John 5.14 from the Amplified Bible. And it says this, and this is the confidence, the assurance, the privilege, the boldness which we have in him. We are sure that if we, make, we ask anything, make any request, according to his will, in an agreement with his own plan, he listens to and hears us. So, <coughs> excuse me. If we have something on our hearts and we feel like ultimately it is our purpose and it is something that we are destined to do, we need to bring it to God and ask him and just wait quietly for his answer. And it may not come how you expect it. It's not some big thing like the sky is opening up and God's like, here you are. Here's your answer. And, um, you know, not some big dramatic thing. But, you know, basically, whatever happens next, you'll know if it was his will or it lined up with his plan when you try to move forward with it. And the result that that happens when you try to move forward, that will that will tell you if it was for you or not. So... Let's say you try to get a new job or start a new business. If it falls through, okay, that wasn't for you. So you try something else and you go to God with it again. Always go to him before you solidify any plans. And he'll, he'll surely show you if it's for you or not. And if it's for you, he'll listen to you and he'll hear you and he'll bring it to fruition. But if it's not for you, then you'll know that too because... It won't come to pass. So, just realize that sometimes, um, even in our faith walk, sometimes we're doubtful. We don't really know. We don't really know what's going on. And we don't really sometimes know. It's, it's hard to believe. It really is, believe me. It's hard to believe. But, I've seen that if you, if something is for you, more things will start come to pass there's a sequence of events that will start to occur and you'll be like wow like this must really be my calling like this is really what I'm supposed to be doing because things keep coming your way and people keep saying things to you and it it really gets ingrained in your head that this might be for you and what you've been searching for all along and praying for all along and asking God to do for you and bring the past that maybe it is happening and maybe not on your timetable ne not on your timetable it is not in our ability or capability to bring things to pass for ourselves that's works of the flesh so we need to realize that if something is for us it's going to come to pass because God allowed it to be so so when, that's, when you surrender to that and you yield to that and you decide you decide that you are not in control and you are okay with not being in control, it's amazing what happens because you just feel a sense of freedom. It is a sense of peace because you know that somebody else is in control. The greater, higher being, the most high, the anointed one, the liberating king, is in control. And just allow him to lead you 
Make your path straight and direct them. Just know, recognize, and acknowledge him. And he will directly make straight and plain your paths. It says so in Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. And it says that you should not rely on your own insight or understanding. So, just know that. Whatever is for you is for you. And if something is for you, there's no no devil in hell. And there's nothing or no one on earth that can stop it from coming to pass for you. So, just take solace in that. Um, so, to reiterate, if you want life balance, you need to take time off from work sometimes. You need to have um, free time sometimes and um, where you don't have to do absolutely. If there's nothing that you have to do. There's no mandatory things that you have to do. Then, it's, you, need to learn, you need to also learn that it's okay to have me time. It's okay to be by yourself sometimes. You need that. It's healthy. You can be away from people sometimes. Um, next, you gotta spend time with your family. You gotta let, let them know you you love them because uh, tomorrow's not promised. And, um, just don't take them for granted. That's all. Love them as much as you possibly can. Spend time with them as much as you possibly can. Um, next, spend time with your friends. If you have great friends, appreciate them. Don't take them for granted. You know, it's hard to come by loyal friends. And so just remain grateful for them and appreciate them for who they are in your life. And what they bring to your life. The value that they add to your life. That goes for family as well. Next. Take care of yourself inside and out. So. That means pampering yourself from time to time. That means doing workouts. To keep your body in shape. That means spending time with God to keep your spirit in shape. That means journaling to keep your mind in shape. Because. When you get the stuff. Out of your mind. It's so cleansing. It's so cathartic when you get it down on paper. And it's almost like you're, you're giving it somewhere to go. You're depositing your thoughts somewhere so that they don't all, you know, cause your brain to explode. Because sometimes you think so much and you you analyze things so much and you just really fixate on things. It is essential to journal to get some of that off of you. I don't care if you do gratitude. I don't care if you write letters to yourself. I don't care if you just write a plain old journal. Whatever you do, get your thoughts on paper. It is essential for your health, for your survival, um, mentally at least. Um, and last but not least, you have to have your priorities. Got to have a job. Um, be gainfully employed. Ha have some goals. Um, you know, pay your bills. Do chores, um, things that you don't like to do, but you have to do. So, and just try to find joy in those moments as well. Don't dread it. Don't fear it. Don't procrastinate profusely. Try your best to find joy in those moments as well, because it will really make all the difference if you don't spend all your time dreading things. Joyce Meyer talks about that a lot and it really kind of sunk into my heart this week because she was talking a lot about fear and dread and how we procrastinate. And what you should do is when you don't want to do something, do it. get up early in the morning and do it as soon as possible and then it's over with. That's why I do exercise and, or any, any chores or things that I have to do and I don't like it or I'm not, I know it's going to like, be painstaking to me it's a source of um dread for me i do it early in the morning and by the end of the day it's over with and i'm i'm like happy that i got it over with so that's the main thing you don't like you know, something you don't like doing do it early in the morning it'll do it it'll save you a lot of trouble and you'll have the rest of the day to yourself so I'll just think about it like that well that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you got something out of it. And I hope it was informative. And um, as always, subscribe below if you haven't done so thus far. And please like and or comment. Thank you for watching me. Thank you for supporting me. And uh, I hope you have a blessed day. Until next time, peace and blessings. Bye-bye.